BBC Sounds. Music, radio, podcasts. Hello and welcome to the Scottish Football Podcast, your easily digestible daily dose of news, views and analysis. It's Tuesday the 7th of May, I'm Gavin Wallace and here's what's coming up. We knew we needed to win the game today, a draw wouldn't, wasn't really good enough for us. You know, it's still going to be exciting, there's still a few games left and, and you never know what's going to happen. You know, it's, it's the better results for us because we're still top of the league and we have the goal difference that is uh, making sure that we are on top of the league, but we look like the better team today and... I love that. It's tight at the top as Rangers and Celtic eke out a nil-nil draw in their final derby of the SWPL season. But where will the title end up? Goal! Oh, it's a goal! And it's Party Thistle who have taken the lead here against Dundee United. Brian Graham, a stunning start for Party Thistle. Nikolai Todorov um, hit it from outside the box into the... Top left corner, 1-0 Airdrie. The Scottish football whirlwind continues as the playoffs begin tonight with Airdrie hosting Partick Thistle. I don't think it's been helpful in any way, shape or form, the fact that David Moyes has been messed around by the owners. And it's the end of the line for a long-serving Scottish manager in England, which doesn't seem to have impressed Chris Sutton. This is the Scottish Football Podcast. Uh, right then, so much to talk about, loads to to do and pour over the today on the, the Scottish Football Podcast. Uh, we're joined the, today on this edition by the former Glasgow City and Scotland midfielder Suzanne Lappin. Good morning to you, Suzanne. Good morning. And comedian John Hartson, stunt double and Patrick Thistle fan Ray Bradshaw joins us as well. Morning, Ray. Yeah, I thought you were genuinely about to call me John Hartson there and I was going to just log off. I was like, it's not for me today. <laughs> no, not, not that type. Are you too nervous about tonight, are you? No, I'm not nervous about tonight. Just fed up of being John Hartson's stunt double when I think Liam Boyce is slimmer. So I'll take that comparison a bit better. All right, well, we'll do a retake on that. And we're joined today <laughs> by Liam Boyce's slimmer brother and comedian and party thistle fan, Ray Bradshaw. Um, Hello, Ray, how are I you? imagine that was stipulated in every gig I did from now on. <laughs> like, that's my diva-esque request. <laughs> that and 16 crates of fizzy ginger juice. <laughs> <laughs> right guys, so loads to get on with on the podcast today We're recording this in the morning as we normally do Ahead of the playoff games tonight But there's a lot of Scottish football headlines That we need to have a look at this morning And they are Celtic's Matt O'Reilly thinks teammate James Forrest Doesn't get enough respect And should be heading to the Euros with Scotland Scotland boss Steve Clark is set to be looking To name uncapped Liverpool forward Ben Doak In his 26-man Euros squad Lawrence Shanklin says he's open to a summer move from Hearts as he enters the final year of his Tynecastle contract. Lewis Ferguson has been awarded the prestigious Bulgar Eli number eight award given each year to the top midfielder in Serie A. And Hamilton boss John Rankin has signed a new three-year deal with the League One side. It's the headlines this morning. Um, we're going to start, though, folks, um, at Broadwood. Another huge game in the SWPL yesterday. Rangers and Celtic drawing nil-nil. There's all that leaves uh, the two sides locked on the same points. Although Celtic have the advantage, Suzanne, on goal difference by 13 goals. That's very difficult to turn around, isn't it? Yeah, I think, you know, after the, the result yesterday, um, you would say it, it def- definitely favours you know, Celtic, um, it's quite a significant goal difference that they have um, ahead of Rangers. I think yesterday, um, before the game, if you'd have asked both managers, I know now, I think Elena would definitely have been the, the happiest of the two. I think Joe Potter on your side had to had to get the three points, had to get the win. I think if you look at the, the run-in now, you know, although it is the split and every fixture is difficult, I think, you know, the, the fixtures that Celtic have left um, in terms of Thistle, uh, Hibs and Hearts, I think they are capable of navigating that. Um, and I think, you know, after that, you would say that it is in Celtic's hands. You know, remember, they've never won the title. So, you know, it's, it's massive uh, if they do go ahead and, and, and get the title. But, you know, Rangers are going to be breathing down their neck. Um, you know, any slip up and they'll be looking to, to capitalise. 
How do they deal with that pressure then? How you know, obviously, as you say, they've not been in this position before. Um, how do they draw on this pressure? Because there is now a lot of pressure. It is their own destiny, their own fate, and it's only really them that could ruin it for themselves. Yeah, and that is a, di- a different position. Um, you know, being out in front um, is a different pressure from being the team chasing. If you think about all last season, um, you know, I think getting into the final game, Celtic knew that. You know, they had to win, but they were relying on the results elsewhere. It didn't go the way. You know, it's different this year. It is in their own hands. Um, you know, that's something Elaine will need to, to deal with as a manager, make sure that, the you know, the players cope well enough with it. I think they've got enough experienced people in there, though, that, you know, when you're this close to the title, um, you know, to, to be champions, you've got to deal with that pressure. And then um, they'll be hoping, as I say, that they can they can get their hands in the title because it's been the one that's eluded them so far. You know, they've always been the, the cup specialists, if you like, but, you know, this season they've, they've fell short in both cups. This is the only silverware they're, they're going for. And, you know, as I say, with the three fixtures remaining, um, you know, I think from their point of view, you know, that they'll be feeling that they could go and, and win those games. How key is Amy Gallagher then to Celtic? She's back from injury now, so how how key is she to to this run in for them? Yeah, I think she's massive. You know, for me, I think she's been one of the outstanding players in the country this season. Um, I think particularly when when Tash Flint returned to Scotland, that allowed Amy Gallagher to to drop deeper um, into a, a more central, deeper role, which I think she actually thrives in. Um, I think that's the best part of her game is actually her, her ability to spot. Her spot a pass and, and create a chance. I think her and Tash Flint, um, you know, their link up and the, the goal return between the two of them has been significant. Although of late in the last couple of games that has sort of dried up with, you know, as you say, McGallagher coming back from injury, she will be key. Um, you know, really that, that spine of the, the Celtic team is key um, with Tash Flint, Amy Gallagher, Natalie Ross, and then you've got, you know, the the back three, you've got Caitlin Hayes, who's always such a significant player in both ends of the pitch. Um, so they do have quality um, that, that should be enough to, to navigate them um, to the title. Ray, Joe Potter's Rangers still going for the treble. Um, Joe ourselves had a, a pretty remarkable season. So there's, it's, it's really good as well when you see the men's game doing so well with a title race. And now the women's game is, you know, really, you know, Boosting forward with that as well, and there's it's all big games. I mean, what Celtic are hosting your team, Partick Thistle, this uh, on Sunday. Rangers heading to Glasgow City. So there's no real easy games in the the SWPL one, is there? No, it's, especially when you think back to last season, the final day of last season, when any of three teams could have won it. Like you'd you'd pay for that in the men's game. That is exactly what we want. It's very exciting. I just loved because um, I was saying to this just before we started. I didn't know it was a daytime kickoff and a bank holiday. I presume that was just so in case anything happened like last year, they could get the police statements out of the way to get it on a bit quicker. I think that's why they did the earlier <laughs> kickoff. But it seems to be, when you look at the game of the whole, there's a really beautiful thing. I think it was a daily record website, I think I saw yesterday, when it said, we'll update you on all the action from the game. And generally their match report said, kickoff, half time, full time. And I was like, no, people hit the bar and stuff. I know it was nil now, but they just insinuated nothing had happened. I think in terms of the Scottish game, the for women's football, the league's great just now, but you want to see that transfer into the national team because we've had a bit of a stinker uh, recently. But one thing that blows my mind just now is Celtic are top of the league. It looks like they might win it, but you got a clean sweep on Sunday night of manager of the year, player of the year, and young player of the year going to Rangers. And it feels like maybe don't give out the awards that early when the season's not done because you could have the manager of the year being pipped on the final day of the season. Stuart Kelwell said something very similar after um, Sam Nicholson's goal for Murrowell at the weekend is the fact they're dishing out these awards that early and that was an absolute worldie. Um, and also be very careful, Ray, what you say about the women's national team. Pedro might come after you. He's not very happy. He doesn't like the criticism too well. He's, he's not one for taking it quite well, is he? Um, but Suzanne, Euro Club Glasgow City, title holders right now. They're six points off the top. Um, where's, it, where's it went wrong for them this season? I think um, I think the difference, to be honest, in, in Glasgow City this year has been, um, you know, they've not got that that number nine um, that will get you your your fifteen twenty goals a season. Um, I think they've they've missed a lot of chances. They've been creating chances, particularly against Tibbs at the weekend. There again, 
you know, they created enough chances to win the game in the first half. Um, I think the return of Fiona Brown, you know, was something that everyone was excited about. She could have been the real difference maker for them as well. Um, just the, the quality that Fiona has. She didn't get an injury. Um, but I think if you look at the, the, the squads of Rangers, Celtic and Glasgow City, I think it has been, you know, the, the lack of that, that striker, if you like, that will get you those goals, your, your go-to player, also the strength and depth of the squad as well. If you look at the, the substitutions that both Rangers and Celtic can make, you know, they're, they're bringing on people that would easily get into the, the starting eleven each time. And I don't think Glasgow City quite have that this year, um, you know, and they'll be hugely disappointed um, you know, because I, I I don't see a way back from them now, um, in terms of the title and also, you know, that second place spot as well, which is also critical in the league. Well, unlike other fractions of the media, we will keep you up to date of everything that's going on on the SWPL title run. Uh, the new episode of Behind the Goals podcast is out at 12 o'clock, 12 noon today, uh, the 7th of May. Right, let's move our attention then uh, to the Premiership playoff. Uh, Ray, you probably will uh, be buzzing to talk about this. Uh, Partick Thistle away to Airdrie this evening. Uh, neither side going into this in particularly brilliant form, have they? Players, maybe do you think at Farhill had one eye on the playoffs? Do you think? Nah, I think I think our form's actually better than the other two. Uh, Wraith and Airdrie, we've we rested players against Dundee United the other night. It was funny because you say, Gav, like you must be buzzing for the playoffs. I feel like Thistle have been in the playoffs for the last eight months because it was very much Dundee United at one point. What was it? Dundee United and Wraith, and then there was a nine or ten point gap to us in third. And then there was a nine or ten point gap to Airdrie. Uh, no, it was Morton at the time in fourth. So we've been pretty much nailed on for a playoff spot for a long time. So it's just about getting down to business. And we saw last year, as a Thistle fan, how exciting the playoffs can be if you don't go to Dingwall. Like the other five games were absolutely <laughs> class. So yes. we scored, like, if I was to remember off the top of my head, it would be a roughly just under 20 goals in the five games. And then Dingwall, mm. and we all know what happened there because everyone. We'll, we'll move up. on from Dingwall, oh. Ray. Don't, don't worry. We'll, we'll move on. We'll cut that bit out. It never happened. I told you, it's fine. The, the best heckle I've ever had in my life came. I left Dingwall at full time because I thought we were going to win and had to go to Sterling. So, listen to X Time and Penalties in the car. Got on stage in Sterling in a the theatre and still my thistle kit. I literally just walked in and I said, um, Lockdown 2. So, I was about to tell a story about the second lockdown. I went, Lockdown 2. And the guy in the front row went Partick Thistle now. And I was like, today is Brilliant. not the day for this, mate. All the days. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're excited. We got Championship Player of the Year, Brian Graham, on incredible form. I think we've lost one of our last 14 against Airdrie. Uh, we beat them 4 now a few weeks ago. Obviously, they beat us at the start of the season, but they play some nice football. It's going to be interesting. But last year, we went in to the playoffs not with a lot of confidence and then we started scudding teams left right and center this year's a bit different in that the playoffs were the only the best we could have got this year when you look at after doing well last year we announced losses of two million pounds um we lost guys like kevin holt and ross dog they both get promoted kyle turner who's maybe not as such a good thing chris Stillen's done an incredible job uh, recruiting guys like ben stanway young 18 year olds played a, a huge part this season um, signing a guy like Luke Macbeth and Thistle have gone back to the roots of signing guys from the juniors who four or five months later is an absolute stalwart of the team we're coming back I don't know how much we've got in this playoff run but like I said this was the best we could have hoped for so it's just nice to be there Airdrie though to be fair Suzanne under Reese McCabe have been they've been Pretty impressive this season. There's a stat I don't really want to mention for Ray because it might jinx it for them. I think you know where I'm going with that. Thistle versus Airdrie this season. But they've been Airdrie as a package. Been pretty impressive. Yeah, I think they have. Um, I think they've, you know, as you say, they've, they've played some good football. They've got some good results. Um, I think, though, when you, you go into the playoff, it's, it's sort of anyone's game, um, isn't it? It's obviously over the, the, the two legs. Um, I think, you know, for me, when you look at the heads to heads, um, you know, Thistle do have that edge, but, you know, does that go out the window in a playoff? Um, you know, because it's, it's all to play for. But one thing's for sure, I think it'll be, you know, over the two legs, it's going to be a, a great spectacle. And I'm really looking forward to, to watching it to see how it unfolds.
West Ham have announced that David Moyes will leave the manager's post um, at the end of the season after four years at the club. So, I mean, he's done a pretty decent job at West Ham. How cutthroat is that down there? That's crazy. Yeah, he's done um, an amazing job. Um, you know, if you look at what he's done, um, he obviously kept him up, I think, in his, his first year. Um, and then, you know, six and, and seven place finishes, as well as the, you know, triumphing in the, the Conference League as well. I mean, he is he is a, a outstanding manager. Um, I think he's, his record speaks for itself. Um, but yeah, that's, you know, for West Ham, you know, that's going to be a huge change for them because he has, you know, even the players that he's brought through as well, you can see the real togetherness in the in the squad. Um, and, you know, he is he's an outstanding manager and it'll be interesting to see what, what happens next for David Moyes. Ray, it's just, it's, it's absolute crazy, isn't it? When you think of Suzanne's there saying how well he's done. But I think the pressing issue is here. Are you worried that Chris Doolan and Paul McDonald might actually head down south? Would you take a swap, Moisey, for Doolan and McDonald? Would you take that? I'd be heartbroken, but I would take the compensation fee. <laughs> so I think we could maybe do something, maybe get a new stand or something like that. The job David Moyes has done has been, I'm so glad for him because he became a bit of a joke figure after the United thing. He went out to Sociedad. He, did, he kind of became a journeyman. It didn't really happen. But like Suzanne said, to get sixth and seventh. Remember, he saved him in his first stint. The fans didn't like him, so he went away. Pellegrini did a bad job. He came back, saved him again. Sixth, seventh, won a European trophy. And the fans have been complaining about the style of football. See if any manager won a trophy, whether it's with Scotland of the Years or Thistle, a European trophy. We could play for throw-ins the whole game. I would not care <laughs> for about eight seasons because we've won a European trophy. And you saw the fans on the pitch. You see Jared Bowen and mm-hmm. Danny Dyer on the pitch singing. Chesney Hawks is backstage. <laughs> like all the West Ham Illuminati come out. Just I think I think it's pretty disgraceful the way it's been handled because you saw the yeah. news yesterday morning that Lopetegui had been essentially confirmed as a manager before they've done a statement on Moyes. This is a guy who won you a European trophy last year. And let's not forget three back-to-back European football campaigns. So a shambles. And I think, Moyes, you're probably looking at the new Scot- the next Scotland manager. Oof, well, I don't know. Maybe Derek McInnes could be in for a shout at that, but I'd rather he stayed at Kilmarnock. But that's a story for another day, I think. Um, guys, thank you very much for your time today on the Scottish Football Podcast. That's, that's all we've got time for. How quickly does it go in? We could talk uh, about these topics all day, especially the uh, the playoffs that are happening this evening as well. But thank you uh, to Suzanne Lappin and thank you to Ray Bradshaw uh, for joining us. And thank you to you for listening as well today. Uh, we'll be back again early tomorrow. Jordan Campbell and Lee Miller, the guests on the podcast. Never a quiet day in Scottish football. Remember, it is the place to get all your news, analysis and views on everything Scottish football. From me, Gavin Wallace and the wider team here on the Scottish Football Podcast. Thanks for listening. Bye for now. The Scotland Rugby Podcast is now available every Tuesday. Join me, Andy Burke, and Tom English. Just head to BBC Sounds and subscribe to the Scotland Rugby Podcast. It's just seismic stuff. There's bucket hats as well. Oh, really? Yeah. Is this a rugby podcast or is this a fashion podcast? <laughs> Why can't it be a bit of both? <laughs> <laughs> rugby. Let's get on to rugby. There's a lot to be excited about. Today's guest, John McGuigan. Clubs are an absolute bedrock of everything Scottish rugby is about. The Rugby Sports Sound Podcast. From BBC Radio Scotland. You cannot help but be so excited. It's going to be the centre of the rugby universe. BBC Sounds.